Is everybody ready? This is a two minute warning. That means time out for all first downs. <laughs> Everybody ready? Andrea, I think you need to mute your YouTube stream. So that it, I think you're getting feedback. Okay. That means your heart. I'm out for all first down. You need uh, you need a light in the foreground because with the light behind you, you're just pretty much silhouetted. <laughs> I wonder if that's on purpose. <laughs> That's better. That's better. Thank you for letting me know. Mm -hmm. Everybody ready to go? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I hereby call this remote meeting of the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission to order. This meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live for the public to make this meeting more as accessible as possible. Closed captioning is available. If you're on Zoom, click the closed captioning button to turn the captions on or off. General Counsel Fultz, do we have a quorum today? Yes, we do. And because we are meeting remotely, I will call the roll to make sure that we have a quorum and that the meetings accurately reflect today's participants and that we account for all alternates in the event that any commissioner has connectivity issues. When I call your name, please answer with present. Chair Hart. Present. Commissioner Bob. Present. Commissioner Contestable. Present. Commissioner Farrar Dyke. Present. Vice Chair Hull. Present. Commissioner Rush. Present. Alternate Commissioner Al Khatib. Present. Alternate Commissioner Wasmer. Present. And Alternate Commissioner Lobby. Present. Thank you very much. We have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Fultz. We will start today with our safety message from our CEO, David Meyer. Dr. Meyer. Thank you, Chair Hart. With Thanksgiving coming up in a couple of weeks, it's important that everyone keeps the public health emergency in mind. Keeping your distance, wearing facial coverings, and staying home can help save lives. Remember, as always, wash your hands frequently and avoid touching your face or mask. Consider joining family members via video calls rather than in person if they don't live with you. If you're cooking, make sure to pay attention to the food. The turkey may be in the oven for a long time, but you should still not leave a hot oven unattended. This, that also means staying vigilant about keeping children away from the hot oven or stove. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. We will now move on to the minutes from our previous meeting. Secretary Treasurer Farrar Dyke, floor is yours. Good afternoon. The minutes were posted for your review. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? If none, I approve, I move approval of the October 20 minutes as circulated. Is there a second? Commissioner second. Hall has seconded. Um, I will ask general counsel now, Allison Fultz to conduct the roll call vote. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Hart. Approved. Commissioner Bob? Approved. Commissioner Contestable? Approve. Commissioner Farrar-Dyke? Approve. 
Vice Chair Hall. Approve. And Commissioner Rush. Approve. Thank you very much. The motion carries. Thank you. In every meeting, we provide an opportunity for public comments, and we will now ask if any members of the public who have joined our Zoom webinar would like to speak. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom, and our staff will unmute one person at a time. Each person will have a maximum of two minutes. I will pause now to see if we have any public comments. Do we have any, Andrea Hogan? No, Chair Hart, I see no hands raised. Okay, thank you. I would also remind everyone, including those of you watching on YouTube, that you can always report any concerns through our website, which is wmsc.gov, to our social media channels like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or by email. We will now continue to the next item on the agenda, which is my remarks. First, I'd like to welcome everyone again to the November, November public meeting of the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission. I would especially like to welcome our new alternate commissioner from Virginia, Robert Lauby. Mr. Lauby is the former chief safety officer for the Federal Railroad Administration, and he's a licensed mechanical engineer with more than 40 years of experience in safety, security, accident investigation, and engineering. His career includes positions at the National Transportation Safety Board, Nor Brake Corporation, and, and Conrail. Mr. Lauby also served as federal government alternate on the WMATA Board of Directors. We're thrilled to be able to benefit from his experience and expertise. I would also like to congratulate Commissioner Mike Rush on his appointment moving from alternate commissioner from Virginia to commissioner for the Commonwealth of Virginia. I'm saddened by the circumstances that precipitated these changes with the loss of our friend and respected professional colleague, Mark Rosenker. But I look forward to working closely with both of you as we continue our efforts to drive continual safety improvement at WMATA. During today's meeting, we will get an update on ongoing investigations, consider a final safety event investigation report, get an update on Metro Rail's development of corrective action plans related to the Rail Operations Center, Control Center, and get other updates on WMSE's ongoing inspection and oversight work. We will also consider Metro Rail's first public transportation agency safety plan or PTASP. Dr. Meyer, do you have any opening remarks? Thank you, Chair Hart, I do. I'd like to start with an, updated, uh, an update on the needed safety improvements in the ROC, the Rail Operations Control Center. Metro Rail submitted draft corrective action plans for the 21 findings uh, in our ROC audit on time late last month. Our review of these proposals has identified a number of improvements that are required before we can approve these caps for implementation. We have communicated the necessary improvements to the proposals to Metro Rail, and Ms. Samara Singa will have more to say about this later in the meeting. Next, as you noted, the commissioners will be considering uh, Metro Rail's first public transportation agency safety plan or PTASP later in the meeting. This is a significant step in Metro Rail's safety journey that is required by the Federal Transit Administration and the WMSC. In the big picture, an agency safety plan requires a comprehensive safety management approach that involves everyone in the organization in a proactive and data-driven approach to safety. <clears throat> This can take uh, time to fully implement it, uh, fully implement. However, having the plan in place is an important step toward bringing SMS to Metro Rail. We have worked closely with Metro Rail to direct necessary improvements during the agency safety plans development. Approval today by the commissioners would meet the Federal Transit Administration's PTASP enforcement deadline of December 31st. On the October 9th pull apart on the red line, we continue to gather more information, including by participating in various interviews related to the investigation. There are some interim safety mitigations underway as a result of the investigation so far, and work on a final investigative report should be complete by early next year. Turning to the upcoming presidential inauguration, WMSC staff are monitoring inauguration planning and drills, and we will be ready for all appropriate safety oversight activities. Our staff will be observing a separate emergency exercise scheduled this weekend at the Vienna station. It is the first big WMATA emergency exercise under social distancing protocol. <clears throat> 
This type of work is documented in inspection reports and our latest uh, inspection reports dating back to the first of the calendar year, all 171 of them are now available on our website. This includes both in-person and remote inspections, which have in combination allowed us to fully carry out our oversight duties, even during the public health emergency. I want to provide an update to you now on a safety concern that was raised by a Metro Rail employee. This concern about roadway worker protection on the red line near Union Station was raised uh, to both the WMSC and to WMATA. The WMSC quickly investigated and concluded that the employee raised a valid concern regarding a lack of clearance for Metro Rail employees to stay clear of passing trains safely while on the Metro Rail right of way. This employee also raised safety concerns of inefficient, insufficient line of sight uh, in this same area. On October 28th, we directed Metro Rail to require foul time, a higher level of roadway worker protection on track one at the interlocking in this area until the correct level of permanent protection can be identified. Metro Rail complied with our 24 hour deadline by issuing an order on October 29th. I'm pleased that our staff were quickly to evaluate this safety concern and take action. And we thank Metro Rail for its timely compliance with our directive. Finally, I want to note that we transmitted our draft fiscal year 2022 budget work plan to the jurisdictions for review as required ahead of the November 1st deadline for doing so. The Finance and Operations Committee and subsequently the commissioners as a whole provided approval to transmit this draft to the jurisdictions. Our next fiscal year doesn't start until July 1st, 2021. So there will be several other opportunities for additional input by the commissioners in the coming months we will ask uh, the commissioners to approve our, our final budget uh, later this spring uh, next year. Thank you. Thank you for that report, Dr. Meyer. And I'm very pleased to see how well you have had the staff respond so quickly to urgent issues, despite the unprecedented COVID situation that we're operating in. Do any of the other commissioners have any questions for Dr. Meyer? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to safety event investigations. WMSC operations expert, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Bruce Walker will present our first investigation report. Mr. Walker. Um, thank you, Chairman Hart, and good after afternoon, commissioners. Investigation W0052 involves a violation of roadway worker protection procedures at the East Falls Church Station on August 19th. At the time, the station was closed with trains bypassing it due to long-term platform construction. In this event, the operator of an outbound Silver Line train did not stop for an advanced mobile flagger who was properly stationed at the end of the platform. The train entered the station at over 33 miles per hour above the 25, excuse me, above the 25 mile per hour limit for trains that are bypassing the station. Although the AMF was in possession of the orange emergency flag, it was rolled up as he waved it. At that point, vehicle downloads show that the train operator briefly applied brakes, but the train exited the station at about 21 miles per hour. The train operator then left braking mode and moved the master controller into coaster power mode for a considerable distance. When the train passed the AMF, the AMF properly reported the emergency to the rail operations control center. The train operator later moved the master controller into braking mode again and came to a complete stop when the lead car was over a half a mile past the end of the platform. The Rail Operations Control Center contacted the train operator. Shortly thereafter, the RLCC gave the controller, excuse me, gave the train operator permission to continue. When the RLCC controller told the train, the mobile work crew to stand in a place of safety um, and await further pickup. The train operator was relieved by a supervisor at the Greensboro station. According, to the audio recordings, it shows that the Rail Operations Control Center made only one blanket announcement regarding the work crew entering the roadway between McLean Station and the Kilo 98 Junction. That announcement was made 37 minutes before this event, raising questions about the effectiveness of relying on these blanket announcements. Following this event, Metro distributed a lessons learned document regarding train speeds within stations and the importance of following AMF procedures. The train operator also went through refresher training on rules and procedures. This event shows the importance of a complete safety management system approach that identifies and mitigates all potential hazards as part of a regular monitoring and as part of each decision-making process. 
Metrorail established the long-term bypassing of stations during the public health emergency or due to construction, but may not have fully considered hazards that could have been inadvertently introduced. This concludes my um, report to this investigation. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you for that report, Mr. Walker. Um, a couple of questions. One is you say that the AMF properly reported the emergency. What was the emergency? Not stopping or going too fast through the station or both considered emergencies? Well, the emergency that was reported by the advanced mobile flagger, trains are required to stop at the platform to receive a verbal warning of um, the crew that are ahead. If the train fails to stop, they are then to contact the control center and go over the radio stating emergency three times, in which case they will then let the um, controller know that the train didn't stop so that they can warn the crew that are on the roadway. And Bruce, if you could comment, once, once a train operator begins to operate a train after the AMF safety briefing, uh, the train operator is required to operate at or below a certain speed limit until encountering the work crew. And I think the emergency in this case would have been that the train was operating in excess of that speed toward workers on the roadway. That, that is correct. So to kind of to sum up the procedures, after the train operator receives the, the warning from the AMF or advanced mobile flagger on the platform, they're to operate their vehicle at half the regulated speed. So half the speeds that show up on the console until they um, are in sight of the crew. And then they are to operate at a reduced speed until they pass the crew. And then they um, <clears throat> continue operating at half the regulated speed until they reach the next platform. So that was the, the uh, condition at this point. So if the train operator failed to stop, he would have approached the crew at full speed, potentially, um, um, uh, potentially uh, reaching the crew at an accelerated speed, not allowing them um, as much time as, as possible to get out of the way of the oncoming vehicle. Thank you. So what caused the uh, operator to stop the train half mile past the platform? The, the, the advanced mobile flagger reached out to the control center by stating emergency, emergency, emergency three times, <clears throat> at which case the, the radio controller reached out to the train and then um, asked the train if they had stopped for the advanced mobile flagger at the platform. And when they said no, they were then given permission to proceed um, following the AMF procedures until they reached the next station where they were taken out of service. And when an event like this happens, the work crew has to leave the roadway until after the investigation is completed. So the controller then had another train do a train pickup to pick up the workers that were on the roadway until after the investigation um, is concluded. All work stops when an, when an AMF violation occurs. Okay, thank you. Do any other commissioners have any questions for Mr. Walker? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to adopt investigation report Whiskey 0052? So moved. Move. Thank you, is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, I will now ask General Counsel Fultz to conduct our recorded vote. Um, and I apologize, I didn't see who won the competition for the motion. I was in the running. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Contestable. Yes. And Commissioner Bob seconded. Um, I'll now call the roll for the vote. Uh, Chairman Hart. Approved. Commissioner Bob. Approved. Commissioner Contestable. Approved. Commissioner Farrar Dyke. Approved. Commissioner Hull. Approved. And Commissioner Rush. Approved. Thank you very much. The report is approved. Thank you. We will now take up the next agenda item, which is corrective action plans. Ms. Samara Singa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair Hart. Metrorail submitted draft corrective action plans for the 21 findings in the Rail Operations Control Center audit on time last, late last month. Our review of these proposals has identified a number of improvements that are required before we can consider approving these caps for implementation. Generally, the draft plans did not include the required evidence of implementation, and in a number of cases, need significant additional detail and follow-up. 
Metrorail is responsible for addressing these areas and for developing acceptable caps that will fully address each of these findings. We have communicated the required improvements to Metrorail. We have also received several final signed corrective action plans that we had approved for implementation related to our roadway worker protection audit issued earlier this year. Once implemented, these caps will provide safety improvements for everyone on Metro Rail's right of way through improved training, rules compliance, and procedural overview review. Thank you for that report, Ms. Samar Singa. How much time does Metro Rail have to get back to us regarding the uh, rock caps? So um, as I mentioned, they met the initial requirement to provide a proposed selection of corrective action plans that correspond to the 21 findings. Uh, we've reviewed those in detail, each of them individually, and we provided feedback in detail on Friday last week. This would have been the 6th of November. We have allotted two weeks for Metro to make adjustments as we've now provided feedback to them on, and then provide updated revised corrective action plan proposals to each of the ROCC caps that we've asked them to adjust their proposed actions to. So they have until, um, I, I believe, um, two weeks in advance of the sixth. My, um, my math on the spot is failing me, but it'll be two weeks from the 6th of November. Okay, thank you. Do any of the other commissioners have any questions for Ms. Samara Singa? Yes, uh, I, I do have a question. Um, to our knowledge, what mechanism is in place within Metro to uh, ensure to have oversight internally over uh, the, the carrying out of CAPS to make sure that these corrective action uh, plans are indeed carried out? Of course, Chairman Hall. Um, and so there are several avenues that um, are at, at work. Uh, in order to verify that each of these corrective action plans and the actions associated with each of them, once implemented, are carried out by Metro uh, in compliance with the requirements. So one of the avenues that exist is for supervisors and managers to ensure that their frontline personnel adhere to the required um, actions as corrected through these corrective action plans and provide feedback and coaching uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Then there is another level of um, assessment and review and assurance conducted by groups like the Rail Operations Quality Control Team, which is a quality control team embedded with, within the rail transportation um, organization, which ROCC comes under. And so these individuals will also conduct uh, various aspects of inspections and reviews of whether or not various actions are complied with and requirements are met. Then there's a third avenue, which is uh, through the QUICO department, which is the internal quality control um, department within Metro. They conduct ongoing audits um, of various uh, varieties, internal safety audits, and very targeted audits of various rules and procedures to ensure that those things are carried out by the um, frontline personnel, supervisors, and managers who are impacted by um, those rules and procedures. So there are several layers um, and several concurrent efforts that are used to assure that whatever corrections that are put in place are monitored and adjusted um, and any corrections made additionally as they gather more and more information about the effectiveness of the new actions that they put in place. Now that, that is all internal to Metro. In addition to that, consistent with our mandate, we come in and we conduct a, a variety of um, oversight activities that assess whether or not, um, in particular in this case, the Rail Operations Control Center corrections are being adhered to and are being sustained. So through our investigations, through our inspections program, um, through our audits program, um, as well as ongoing interactions with various individuals in that ROCC organization, we conduct our own assessments on how well things are being carried out based on the corrections that Metro has now committed to uh, in terms of making the necessary changes for the overall um, reorganization of the culture at the ROCC. 
Thank you for that explanation. Yes, I would second. Thank you for that very thorough answer to Vice Chair Hull's question. I wonder, do any other commissioners have any questions for Ms. Samar Singh? Okay, hearing none. Next item on the agenda is audits. Again, Ms. Samar Mar Singh, the floor is yours regarding our audits. Thank you, Chair Hart. So as required by, by our program standard, uh, we sent the draft of our elevated structures inspections, maintenance and training audit to Metro Rail late last month for a 30 day review of the factual accuracy of the draft report. We expect to finalize and publish that re audit report before the end of this year. Yesterday, we kicked off our rail maintenance machines or RMM audit. Interviews are now underway. Of course, like with any audit, before we held the kickoff meeting, we requested and reviewed a significant number of documents and we conducted extensive planning sessions with our audit team. We have also started the process for the audit that will follow the RMM audit, which will focus on automatic train control and signaling. Specifically, we have issued the engagement letter to Metro. We have assembled the audit team. We have started conducting planning sessions to determine lines of inquiry and key personnel for interview. That audit will focus on automatic train control maintenance and engineering, the management structure, planning and governance, and associated training. We expect work on that audit to take place largely in December and January of next year. Turning for a moment to oversight of Metro Rail safety certification. Work continues on our pre-revenue service review for the Silver Line extension. As the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority nears substantial completion in the next few months on Silver Line phase two, we will complete the first part of our review that focuses on the construction process. The second part of our review will focus on Metro Rail's readiness to safely open and operate the new line. Although we expect that second portion of the review won't be completed until next summer because some steps will happen closer to the opening date, we are already closely monitoring Metro Rail activities, including the ongoing status of implementation of their rail activation plan. That concludes my update. Okay, thank you for that report, Ms. Samar Singha. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Ms. Samar Singha? Okay, hearing none, we will now move on to our consideration of Metro Rail's Public Transportation Agency safety plan that I mentioned at, at, at the introduction. Ms. Samara Singha, the floor is yours again. Thank you, Chair Hart. As Dr. Meyer mentioned, the transition from a system safety program plan, an SSPP, to the Public Transportation Agency's plan, a PTASP, is a significant milestone that Momata is required to meet to comply with federal regulations and the WMSC requirements. The objectives here are safety, accountability, increased use of data, and a clear commitment that every employee from the frontline worker to the supervisor, to the managers and the executive leaders are accountable for upholding the commitments to safety. This includes clear direction on how each person at Metro Rail can meet the safety responsibility. It takes specific training, specific avenues for reporting safety issues and communications to keep everyone up to date on how these reports are being used to proactively improve safety at Metro Rail. The Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan or the PTASP is required to be built on a new foundation for transit, the Safety Management System or SMS, an approach that has long been used in the airline industry. While the System Safety Program Plan the SSPP 
was built around 21 elements. The PTAS is built around four pillars. Safety management policy, safety risk management, safety assurance, and safety promotion. This means that there must be an agency-wide safety objective. Senior management must be committed to continually improving safety and that there must be specific methods, processes, and structures in place to meet the safety goals that have been set. It also means that WMATA must continually evaluate the effectiveness of its mitigations, support the identification of new hazards, and determine the need for new controls based on that. This requires, again, training, communications, and other actions to create a positive safety culture at all levels of the workforce. The goal is to be proactive by identifying and addressing issues before an accident occurs and by ensuring continuous learning and open dialogue. Compared to the current system safety program plan or the SSPP, the agency safety plan or the PTASP has an increased focus on performance-based data review and analysis and emphasizes that safety responsibility extends to everyone at MetroRail, not just the safety department. Other aspects of the safety program like safety event investigations and internal safety reviews will continue under the new plan as it did in the previous plan, which is the SSPP. The WMSC has reviewed and provided feedback and direction on multiple drafts of the WMATA agency safety plan, leading up to this final version that is before you today. And I might add that when I use the term agency safety plan, that is, uh, I'm referring to the exact same plan as the PTAS, or the Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan. The Federal Transit, Transit Administration has set an enforcement deadline of December 31st for adoption of a PTAS by rail transit agencies. As the State Safety Oversight Agency for Metro Rail, the WMSC must approve Metro Rail's PTAS before it can be implemented. WMATA is required to review the, the plan annually. The WMSC is also responsible for reviewing and approving future updates to the PTASP. And I might add, every time the PTASP undergoes review and updates, regardless of whether it's an annual cycle or something that is responsive to an immediate need, the WMSC has to review and approve each of those changes. A vote to approve the plan today means that the commissioners concur with the WMSC staff assessment that the plan complies with federal law and regulations, that the plan has a su sufficiently explicit process for safety risk mitigations, safety ma risk management with adequate means for risk mitigation. That the plan includes a process and timeline for annual reviews and updates that the plan includes a comprehensive staff training program for operations personnel directly responsible for safety, that the plan identifies an adequately trained safety officer who reports directly to the general manager, that the plan includes adequate methods to be actually executed, and that the plan has been approved by the WMATA Board of Directors. The WMATA Board of Directors approved the plan on October 22nd, and the plan has been signed by the general manager. To be clear, adopting this plan is just one of the first steps towards these safety improvements. MetroRail will need to implement these safety improvements in a comprehensive and consistent way, which we understand may take some time. The WMSC will oversee this implementation and will continue to identify areas where MetroRail can and must get better. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Amar Singer, for that comprehensive report. It's, this is a big step forward and one of the 
one of the points that's emphasized by the need for the annual review and reconsideration is that safety is not a destination, but a continuing journey and you never reach it. You're, you, you're, always, you're always in need of improvement and continuous improvement is something that's emphasized by this annual review. Are there any questions from any of the commissioners from Ms. Samar Singer regarding the PTAS? Okay. Uh, I have is a, there a motion to adopt? Resident I have a question. R oh, excuse me, did you have a, yes, Commissioner yeah. Contessa. Yes. Um, Sharmela, um, I know that the 21 elements um, of the SSPP have, have have been uh, removed, I suppose, and centered around four pillars. But from your standpoint, as a practical matter, those 21 elements are still a useful uh, construct for, for conducting safety. How, how do those 21 elements get carried forward into the new construct? Uh, I imagine they do in some fashion. Can you comment on that? Absolutely, um, Commissioner Contestable. So just to take, take a moment, just to give a, uh, a quick um, history on how we stand today on the cusp of approving, uh, seeking your approval of the PTASP. In July, 2018, the FDA issued the regulation that requires that agencies such as Metro Rail um, have a public transportation agency safety plan that is structured on safety management systems. Um, in issuing that plan, there was a extensive effort that was put into place by the Federal Transit Administration on providing the necessary technical assistance in order for rail transit agencies, as well as SSOs, to make the transition from the 21 elements of the system safety program plan over to the safety management system structured public transportation agency safety plan. In doing so, the FDA recognized that there were quite a significant number of elements that were resident in the system safety program plan at the time that would be easily transferable um, um, into the public transportation agency safety plan that you, you all have had a chance to review. Um, this was done through what, what the FDA called a crosswalk where they, um, they, are, where they disaggregated the 21 elements and essentially demonstrated how each of those 21 elements can be neatly fitted into one of the four pillars, or in some cases, some of those 21 elements had um, components in them that would have connections to multiple um, aspects of the four pillars. And so there are quite a number of components and parts of the retiring SSPP that are being transferred into the PTASP. I might add, the, the departments and the work that they do in upholding safety um, primarily goes on when it comes to accident investigation, when it comes to um, collection of data um, and uh, conducting internal safety reviews. Those are some of the things that are um, common in both the system safety program plan approach as well as the public transportation agency safety plan approach. Um, and so they can be repurposed. The, the difference here is there are very specific requirements that are being communicated to all levels of functional areas within the organization from the frontline personnel to the technical um, individuals or technical managers, which, may, which are made up of superintendents, supervisors, managers, and directors, and then the executive leadership that prescribe exactly what is required to be done by them. Rather than, rather than making general statements about every, it's everybody's responsibility, there are specific responsibility that are prescribed for each of the individuals that is required to be uphold upheld by them in order to meet the safety commitment that is made in the safety policy. And this is accomplished through making sure that not only communicating the responsibilities and the requirements, but ensuring that there are um, mechanisms at place to ensure that training is robust enough so that people are able to meet the requirements that are um, required of them. Um, having mechanisms in place, just like Vice Chair Hal was asking about, how do you verify? How do you assure that these things that have been instituted are being carried out? So 
Um, that's through investigations, through conducting of internal safety audits and so forth. So there are commonalities. Um, the, the difference is there are very prescribed responsibilities. Uh, data is used, but data is much more heavily utilized and there's a specific workflow in using the data in making the decisions on what is working, what is not, and then what is not working is also based on data in adjusting to meet the needs of the system. So it is data-driven, proactive, a top-down uh, approach to safety management uh, rather than the previous approach of purely hazard identification. Thank you. I had a question of basically uh, on this uh, program. The, the PTA SP is, is certainly a, a step ahead and uh, certainly uh, will improve situation on uh, Metro Rail. Is this the is this really the ultimate here, or, or are there other tools that Metrorail needs to, to to basically support their safety program in the coming years? And I, and I guess in asking that, um, I, I'd ask, you know, are other industries um, are, are they at a higher step? Is there something in the future here that we should be looking forward to? Well, the answer certainly to that has to be yes. This is really the, the ground floor of SMS um, for rail transit. Um, this this um, PTASP will be updated annually, and I'm sure that it will evolve over time. It will go through the same approval cycle that uh, it's going through now for its first time, first by the WMATA board, then by the general manager in his accountable executive role, and then back to the WMSC. And I'm sure we will see it evolve over time. Um, SMS has been active in particularly aviation for many, many years. And you know, one of the hallmarks of SMS is that proactive data-driven approach where, where um, rather than, as Ms. Samara Singa just said, rather than um, identifying hazards and mitigating them, the idea behind SMS is that you are you're, you're, you're using metrics to assess safety risk, you're making mitigations against that risk, and you're continually monitoring to make sure that those, those mitigations actually have the intended effect. Um, that's um, very much um, a, a metro rail, like most rail transit properties, is getting in at the ground floor of doing that, and it will take some time to see it get implemented. And I'm sure that uh, both together, uh, Metro and the WMSC will have some growing pains as we work to see that implemented. Does that uh, begin to address your, your, your question, Commissioner Lobby? Yes, it sounds, it sounds like uh, with, with this program and, and with the uh, WMSC's um, responsibilities to approve it, that this will be an important tool for, you know, basically raising the bar as, as we learn more about uh, areas uh, that, that we feel could uh, use improvement. So I think it'll be an important tool going forward, and it sounds like we'll have a chance to help uh, um, Washington Metro to, to improve their, their safety culture, their, their SMS program and, and other elements uh, as, uh, as uh, we become aware of them. This has been, a, for the whole rail transit industry, this has been a multi-year, multi-step process. And in the, the run-up to rolling out um, agency safety plans, which had initially been due this summer, but the FTA used discretionary authority to waive enforcement until December 31st due to the health emergency affecting the country. And quite honestly, that's thrown a bit of a monkey wrench into implementation plans at transit properties across the country that were planning more extensive training programs and rollout programs than they've been able to implement while they've been also simultaneously dealing with uh, the health emergency. So, so um, I, I think Metro may not be as far down the playing field as they would like to be on, or as they were intending to be on SMS at this point, but they're not really different from all of their sister transit properties around the country for the very same reason. And as the PTASP is, uh, is rolled out, there'll be training elements for uh, Washington Metro employees? Yes, I'm confident that they will do that. And I know that the safety department has already done that for, uh, for the leadership team. And if I'm not mistaken, for the board. Uh, 
wouldn't be surprised if the training was on an industry-wide basis because Federal Transit Administration is on a learning curve on this as well. So I think since it's the whole industry implementing it more or less simultaneously, I imagine there's going to be training that, that goes across the industry. And there, there definitely has been. TSI has offered SMS training for a number of years. I think that transit properties themselves are offering tailor-made training for their own individual plans. Yeah, certainly, certainly training is, is uh, important for for the industry, um, but it's also important for Washington Metro employees to understand, you know, what the program is at WMATA and and what their role is in in implementing this uh, important program. In a very real sense, the the what 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 one of the main goals of SMS is to get safety out of just the safety department and get it, uh, you know, uh, uh, as part of everyone's portfolio. So certainly, training is required to do that. I um. I think it's probably fair to say, though, that this is more of an evolution of an approach to safety than it is a um, complete reversal or throwing a baby out with the bathwater type of thing. So no while there are there's a learning curve with with this type of an approach, um, I think it's probably better best to characterize it as an evolution of the safety thought process into something that hopefully will be more even more effective. So. Um, you know, I wouldn't want people to leave, you know, take away the wrong impression that there would be some sort of gap in this transition. So, If, if I may uh, very quickly address Commissioner Lobby's comments on training. Um, Commissioner Lobby, in the PTASP, um, there are very spe specific prescribed training requirements as it correlates to the various functional categories of employees that are required to uphold safety from the standpoint of their responsibilities, their day-to-day -day responsibilities. So the frontline person, personnel have a minimum required safety training that is already prescribed in the plan in order for them to understand what is SMS and how does that correlate to how they carry out their work. Um, there are 22 safety risk coordinators that are designated in this plan. And that is essentially um, to ensure that there are these SMS ambassadors throughout the various functional groups in Metro Rail's various departments. And this goes back to the comment that we made that in this formulation, the safety department is not the responsible party for carrying out safety. It's, it's all of these functional groups and all levels of um, the organization. And so these safety risk coordinators are essentially an extension almost of the safety department in having a higher understanding of what SMS requires, having a higher level of training in order to accomplish that. So training is very much uh, a, um, inbuilt, ingrained uh, aspect of ensuring that the tools are available in order for the, for the SMS approach to be successful at Metro. Very good. Thank you. Are there any questions from any of the other commissioners? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to adopt resolution Romeo 2020-10, which would approve WMATA's PTAS for this year? So, so moved. Her general counsel, Allison, who, who did, who won that vote? I think it was uh, Commissioner Hull. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Second is Commissioner Bob. I will now ask general counsel Fultz to conduct our recorded vote. Uh, Chairman Hart. Approved. Commissioner Bob. Approved. Commissioner Contestable. Approve. Commissioner Farrar Dyke. Approve. Commissioner Hall. Approve. And Commissioner Rush. Approve. Thank you very much. The PTASP is approved. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is resolutions. We have three more resolutions on the agenda today. Commissioners and alternate commissioners had an opportunity to review the draft policies and the supporting resolutions. First resolution is an update to our conflict of interest policy. And the second is updating our open meetings policy. This update aims to simplify the open meetings policy. The revised conflict of interest policy also aims for increased clarity and is based on our experience up to this point to ensure that our policies reflect how we can and should be doing our work. These two policies specifically maintain an emphasis on integrity, transparency, and increased 
internal and uh, ensuring internal consistency. Is there any discussion regarding these resolutions? All right, hearing none, I will take them one at a time. Is there a motion to approve resolution Romeo 2020-11, which is the conflict of interest policy? So moved. Okay, Commissioner Russ, is there a second? I second it. Thank you. I will now ask Commission, excuse me, General Counsel Fultz to conduct our recorded vote. Chair Hart. Approved. Commissioner Bob. Approved. Commissioner Contestable. Approved. Commissioner Farrar Dyke. Approved. Commissioner Hall. Approved. And Commissioner Rush. Approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now moving on to the next one. Is there a motion to approve Romeo 2020-12, which is our open meetings policy? So moved. Commissioner Rush moved. Is there a second? Uh, I second. Okay, Commissioner Farrar Dyke, thank you. I will now ask General Counsel Fultz to conduct our recorded vote. Thank you very much. Chairman Hart. Approved. Commissioner Bob. Approved. Commissioner Contestable. Approved. Commissioner Farrar Dyke. Approved. Commissioner Hall. Approved. And Commissioner Rush. Approved. Thank you. The revisions to both the open meetings policy and the conflict of interest policy are adopted. Thank you, General Counsel Fultz. So those policies will be posted, those revised policies will be posted on our website. Now we have one more resolution on our agenda for today. Dr. Meyer, would you please explain this one? Thank you, Chair Hart. Uh, this resolution provides for a technical change regarding resolution numbering. Uh, some of you may remember that back in April of 2019, we changed the numbering scheme for our resolutions and we renumbered the eight resolutions that had come before. Uh, unfortunately, we missed one. So this resolution fixes that mistake by renumbering one more resolution. It has no effect at all on the contents of, of that or any resolution, um, but the resolution in question authorized the CEO and the general counsel to sign grant applications and to sign accepting the terms and conditions of grant awards. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. Is there a motion to approve to adopt resolution Romeo 2020-13? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Second. Thank you. I will now ask General Counsel Fultz to conduct our recorded vote. I can take a number up to 500. Thank you very much. Chair Hart. I can approved. Commissioner Bob? Approved. Down for, down for. Commissioner Contestable? Approved. Commissioner Farrar Dyke? Approved. Commissioner Hall? Approved. Commissioner Rush? Approved. Thank you very much. The Resolution is approved. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our agenda for today. Uh, are there any comments, suggestions, questions by any of the commissioners before we seek adjournment? Okay, seeing none, this concludes our public meeting for today. As a reminder, you can always report any concerns through our website, wmsc.gov through our social media channels like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or by email. I'd like to thank the members of the public who attended this remote meeting. Thanks also to the staff for their tireless efforts to help ensure Metro's continuous improvement and for preparing for this meeting, both of which are considerably more challenging in this unprecedented COVID world. And last but not least, thanks to the commissioners for bringing their background and experience to this process to the benefit of the traveling public. We expect to hold our next meeting on January the 26th. The meeting will again be held remotely via video conference and we look forward to seeing everyone then. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Commissioner Farrar Dyke, is there a second? Second. Any objections? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.